What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Seattle Vikings and here are the lot of results. Boston uh, from Columbus gets the first overall pick. Colorado has two in a row, the four and the five and New Jersey's pick turned out to be 13th overall. So not as good as uh, what was initially thought but still manageable and maybe still obtainable is that guy listed to go fifth overall. Um, that offensive defenseman. Now, he is, he didn't get a lot of points, but he's also in a very, very good league. So that's part of it. Um, he's in a plus face and a plus competition, 18 points in 60 games played, you know, not, not too bad. Uh, not that much time. Well, for defenseman, not as much time on ice per game. So, but I really like that he is, he's a good puck mover has a heavy slap shot and he has good shutdown ability. Like I like all that kind of stuff. Um, and he's similar to PK Subban. Like I, I really like everything about him and he could be the guy to fast track us into getting that you know, top two offensive defensemen. And I definitely think that that should be a pursuit of ours. Uh, it, and it's looking like a trade isn't really, really working because all the guys didn't look like they were incredible. Like, you know, you know, guys we could trade for didn't look like they're, they're going to be top twos, etc., etc. So this guy could be a guy that we trade up for, uh, listed to go fifth overall guaranteed elite. Don't know how good he'll be overall wise. I mean, there's also, you know, Olofsson here who, uh, same kind of competition, less games played. Less time on ice. Um, can't tell if that's, you know, better points or what. But same kind of thing, but lacks teammate utilization. I'm not a fan of that. Filatov, um, heavy slap shot, great puck move from mobility, but lacks size. Size I'm not too, too concerned about, about. But for defensemen, maybe it is pretty good. So whichever one we can move up for is a guy. But I, I really like Stahl because he's also got the shutdown ability and he has zero weaknesses. Stole, I should say. And he's a great puck mover with a heavy slap shot. Like, I like all that stuff. He's a good, good puck mover. He's bound to get assists. If he has a heavy slap shot. He's bound to get goals or assists, you know, rebounds, etc. So, I think that guy is our guy right there. I really do. So, that's that's kind of my thinking on it. If we can get him, I definitely say we should get him. I forgot to pin some guys, but I'll do that in the beginning. I just remember, right as I hit B, I was like, oh, I should have pinned. Alright, so, uh, Patrick Kane retires, age 36. Great career for him. Oh, one point shy of a point a game, guys. So there's what, 0 .99999 points per game? Jesus. Blake Wheeler retires. Jonathan Taves also retires. So Kane and Taves retire the same year. I think Kane could have kept playing, man. He's only 36. He's probably still good overall, too, or at least decent. But whatever. How, can I check? Yeah, I'm not agreeing with that retirement, man. He could have easily played more, but hey, whatever. Uh, Blake Wheeler... That makes a bit more sense. Jonathan Taze, uh, we don't really have him scouted, so it's hard to say. Stastny makes a whole lot of sense. TJ Oshi definitely makes sense. Uh, Koivu retires, definitely makes sense. James Neal at age 37, yeah, it looks like it's making some sense that he's uh, dropping off a little. Everyone else is making a lot of sense. The Wayne train's gone. <laughs> David Backus, Akposo, Broussard, Frulig, Berglund, but yeah, Kane, I think could at least played another one year, probably even two. Mark Edward Vlasic retires Pickles. Probably looked like he could have played another year shut, sh trying to shut things down. But I guess it was time for him to uh, depart. What a career, though. Almost 1,500 games played. Not a big point score, but he's a shutdown guy. All right, but Nino. Yep, and that's pretty much all the major ones here. Goalies. Marc-Andre Fleury retires. Jonathan Quick retires as a in free agency. Huh. Yeah, they're all kind of looking at retirement here. Don't know about Crawford. Yeah, they all look like... Okay, so goalies make usually make a bit more sense when they retire. But yeah, m most of the main ones right here. Auntie Ranta, the rest is mostly career backups, etc. Not too bad, though. Alright, so... Draft time. Now, I like I said, I think we should really move up for that guy, if we can, here. At 5th overall. Which, Colorado, they have both those picks. They might not want to give them up. You know, they... They don't want to give up that one. It will be pretty difficult to get one of these. But if we want to... They're, they're already pretty much guaranteed a left-handed defense. And so it does make sense that they could give up one of these picks. The three here are all defensemen listed to go. So, you know, I, it from that standpoint, it definitely makes sense that we could trade up for it. And maybe give them a player. So... Let's sort here. Get some guys. Okay, let's pin that guy. He might be a guaranteed. That's a goalie, sure, but... 
Still might be something here. Obviously want to pin all of these low elites. There's a gem here. I like that. Uh, another gem, but not fully scouted. But I think we should pin him. All these guys are defensemen, so I'm not going to go after all of them. We have enough defensemen. So we'll just pin the gem. Make sure we can get him. Pin all these guys. Make sure we can get them. We don't have a whole lot of picks because I didn't stock up. Because, yeah. <laughs> Unsigned players. And we don't really need to draft anymore. So, I do still want to try to move up for this guy here. So, what do we move? What do we try to get? Now, we're pretty much guaranteed a defenseman. It would be, you know, better to maybe go for the fourth there so they don't steal that offensive defenseman from us. But, I don't think they'll pick out of order. So, I'm going to play it sort of risky here and tra try to trade for the fifth here. We're going to use the 13th to move up, I think. That's the best bet there. That's the only one we have, actually, because, yeah, we traded our, uh, traded our pick to get this one. So, 13th goes in there, and then a defensive, uh, maybe a prospect, but most, more than likely, uh, Kempinen. He's got a lot of value to him, and I don't know if that's completely uh, <laughs> good, all that value. I don't know, this guy just doesn't seem to produce. You know what I mean? Like, he's had a lot of opportunities here. He's been in the top four, he's had power play time. His offensive awareness just isn't where it needs to be. He had a great, you know, season. He's decent defensively. He had a great plus minus. But how much can we attribute that to Pete instead of him? So I think he he goes in this deal. So Kempinen goes in. That should easily get us that. And I might just give him give him that straight up. I might be able to hold on to the 13th and just do that guy straight up for the pick. So I most likely will do that. Kempinen for that fifth overall in this case you know if we're doing Kempinen we might as well go for the fourth and pick the guy out of order it just is a lot it's a lot safer to do that so we're going to trade for the fourth and pretty much guarantee ourselves that guy they're, they're still going to get what they want but we're just what we're doing here is ma oops, making sure that they're not going to pull a fast one on us and grab the guy that we're after that's basically it I don't know why is this guy value so high and he doesn't seem to be that good now he might it might just be because of statistical minuses and stuff but is he ever going to lose that because he doesn't seem to be a production guy now if we trade him he turns out to be a production guy that'll suck but again i still like i still like the, the player we're getting we still have enough defensemen to fill that to fill him up uh, to fill up the role in case you know the guy needs a year of development or something like that so let's just trade campine and straight up for the fourth overall wow yeah they they're not even willing to go for that so we might have to throw in the pick which I wouldn't be too upset about. 13th overall, there's, it's only going to be like a top six guy. It probably has more value than, the, than a top six guy. So we'll throw that. I mean, we might get an elite. But I'm not going to not gonna bank on that. So first overall has been picked. Let's do that. Those two. I still feel like I should take a little bit of something extra back here. Nothing there. Do they have something here that they're willing to give up? Not really, besides Landeskog, but I don't really necessarily want him. I could take a second back or something like that. Let's see if we can grab a second back in this deal. Fourth overall, plus the 35th, and we're giving them the 13th and Kempinen. There we go. Alright, so we, we did that. Kempinen is gone. People not thrilled about it, but we are about to get ourselves a very good offensive defenseman here. As long as he doesn't go third overall. There's no way he goes third overall, though. Oh god. Uh, no, that's that's I for a second I forgot his name, but no, it's Stoll. Yeah, so Olafson goes third overall there. And we're gonna grab Stoll here. Just guarantee ourselves this pick here. I I really like you know, I think he's I think this guy can have what it takes. I like that he has zero weaknesses. I think that's incredible. And similar to PK Subban, PK Subban is a tremendous player. And I love this. Doesn't let things bother bother him. Very well composed. Seems to have a pro mentality and good leadership. Now, that's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty accurate. So, it doesn't look like this guy has any downsides to him. You know, driven to win, but gets emotional at times. Also similar to Subban. I like, St I like Jody Stoll a lot better than anyone else here. So, we're not looking for the best guy. We're looking for the right guy. I think that Jody Stoll is the right guy for our team. So, there we go. Jody Stoll has been selected. And they should get that other defenseman. Yes, they do. They get Filatov, so they still get themselves a nice left-handed defenseman. And uh, we just got the guy that we were after. Now, if we remember this guy... Oh, yeah, actually... Yeah, whatever. Wait, why did it let me check? Oh, no, it didn't. I must have been on the other... Yeah, I was on the other screen. <laughs> anyway, sorry. 
bit of a brain fart right there. So now, yeah, they still have the 13th or the 14th, so they're still, Colorado's still drafting very heavily in this draft. Just not as heavily as they would have maybe liked. So let's finish off this top 10 here. See what else gets selected. A top six guy. More top sixes here. I'm pretty sure that they're mostly, ooh, an elite power forward right there with the eighth pick. So let's see what goes 13th and see if maybe we missed out on something here. Uh, center grinder goes 10th overall for Anaheim. That makes sense. They like their tough guys over there in Anaheim at the expense of winning. Uh, <laughs> 13th pick is a top six and the 14th. Let's see if was there someone we could have got. No, they're both top sixes. Left winger, two way forward, center, two way forward. Still two solid picks for uh, Colorado there. All right, now we'll sim up to our next pick here in the second round. Third overall here. Now let's see with the guys that we've pinned where they're going to be uh, ending up here. And there was a guaranteed sniper right winger, which isn't bad. But 49, 44, we might want to get these guys instead because they're, you know, elites. This guy can come later. Everyone else can come later. All right, so 49, 135. We do have another pick, but... It's... Oh, we don't. Oh, yeah, we do, but it's way, 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 way late. All right, so... The one was 44, one was 49, right? I don't think we're going to be able to get all these guys. Yeah, 44 and 49 here. We're definitely... we. I don't even think we can get the 49 for the second for our second pick here. So we'll either have to skip them or trade off this pick for later ones. Yeah, 35th and 62nd. <laughs> definitely not going to be able to get those guys. We can pick one of them. Or trade this back, trade this up in, in some, some kind of way for a lot of value. But we have so many elites that I might not even bother. I might just pick the guy that I kind of want here. So, which is a two-way forward center or left winger two-way forward? Maybe the center. Centers is kind of kind of light on that side of things. Didn't face great competition. Didn't produce well. This guy faced really good competition. Let's see. No weaknesses. Good offensive instincts. Good defensive zone play. Good puck protection. I like all that. How about this guy? A lot. Okay. Weak on face-offs. We obviously don't want that. Let's go for uh, Radoslav Mahalik here. And he'll be our pick. Picking him a little bit off the board there, but it's worth it. Low elite there in the second round. No weaknesses to his game. Now, that's important for us. All right. Next up here, 30th pick of the second round. Might have to be a bit of a blind-ish pick. Guaranteed top nine guy here. Not bad. This guy's listed as a gem. Another sim. Pierce Sim. A grinder. Listed as a gem here. Might be worth taking a chance on. Because we're 62nd overall. We don't have any other guys coming up for a while. Yeah, not until way, way later. So this actually might be the guy we go for. He's listed as a gem. So he might only be a low top six, but he could turn out to be a low uh, a low elite. If he's a low elite, that's a huge pickup for us. This guy's another role player. Face C competition, not amazing production. A lot of penalties, not good offensive consist consistency or quickness. And yeah, so he's looking like a bit of a project, but it does have him listed as a gem. So I think we go for him and hope for the best out of this guy. Uh, okay, so he, he was only a low top six, but still, not a bad pickup there. Could be a project. All right, now on to the third round, 94th overall. Now we're going to probably start looking at those guys, because we're not going to be doing much trading up or anything like that. We want to start picking the guys that we want, but they're all way, way later. Some of them listed as undrafted. So we still don't have to get this guy. This guy's a goalie. That's just free value. We can still make a blind pick here, and the next pick that we have should grab that guy at 179, or maybe in the pick after that. But here we are. Third round. What's around here? Top six guys. Maybe a top six forward, most likely. Uh, oh, a high backup. Interesting. I wish that was a high fringe starter. I'd be more inclined to grab it. Now, this guy could be some trade value here that we might want to pick up. He can only go as low as a fringe starter, so he's already kind of better than that guy. And no one else is looking incredible. So, you know what? I'm going to pick that goalie. Aiden Haley. Grab him. Starter potential. You know what? That's, real, that's some good value right there. In the third round at 30th overall, man, a starting potential goalie? Hell yeah. 
Ooh, an elite sniper right there. Medium elite sniper went. Also a medium top four. Not too bad. So Jets got a steal right there. Yeah, and to see fringe starters and green backups, high backups, whatever. We got ourselves a starting goaltender. Not bad at all. All right, next pick here. All right. 126. And the guy's going, what, 160-something? So we could still make another pick. But we don't have that many left. So we actually will have to pick out of order to get all these guys. Because I'm not going to trade for extra picks here. We have five more guys to grab. And I don't think we even have that many picks. So might as well start picking him now. 126, let's grab this goalie. Might only be a starter, but still, that's still decent value. No, he's an elite, medium elite goaltender again. Fourth round, not bad. I think we do have some extra later picks here, but I could be wrong. I don't think we do, actually. Fifth round, I think we got one each for all the next ones. So fifth round here, so we're going to have to pick and choose which one of these guys that we really want here. So all right. There's a center here. What's this guy like? Weak on face-offs. I don't want any more centers who are weak on face-offs. We need strong guys on face-offs here. So this guy's a gem, two-way defenseman, a righty. Good character guy. Not the strongest of skaters by the looks of it, but a good puck mover. Listed as a gem. Right-handed shot. Harvey Forbes, I think we go for this guy. He dropped down to the rankings a bit. but And there's also no guarantee that he is an elite. But he is listed as a gem. So, I'm going to take that chance that this guy will be elite and grab him. Another right-handed shot defenseman. Yes, he is a low elite in the fifth round there. So, we have should have two more picks. Maybe an extra one. I'm not too sure. I can check that right now. If we only have two more picks, we can't get all of them. But whatever. I'll just, I won't get the center then because I don't need centers who are weak on face-offs, man. Not what we need at this point. Yeah, just two more picks. Okay, so two more picks here. Of course, we could trade up, but I'm not going to do that. We've got... We've had plenty of fun here drafting wise. Let's just get exactly what we can. Exactly what we quote unquote need or want. Now there's another but another defenseman. That's pro that's why I didn't have him pinned, because we have a lot of good defensive prospects. And this guy's a left wing grinder. And he's listed as a gem. No production, and he wasn't facing the greatest competition, but weak weak uh, no strengths and a bunch of weaknesses there. Can lack the drive to win, but he is listed as a gem. But lacking the drive to win, I'm not a fan of that. Good work ethic and maturity, lack skating. Yeah, everyone you find late are pretty much always going to lack skating in the late rounds. But this guy does have magic hands. While he's weaker on the face-offs, I'm actually leaning towards grabbing this guy instead of one of these other guys now. Even though he's weak on face-offs, the fact that he's got size and skill, size and strength, and magic hands, I kind of like all that. While he's weaker on the skating and face-off side of things, I'm kind of digging everything else about him. Good in any locker room. Has a well-rounded personality. So, I think his his upsides are, are you know, well outweigh his downsides. Now, this guy has only weaknesses. While he's listed as a gem, I don't know. Very loyal, but can lack the drive to win, plus all those other things. Bad consistency, bad skating, bad agility. He is supposed to be more of a defensive guy, but he doesn't even look amazing at that. He'll definitely be more of a project. But I think I should still go for Emilio Wilcox here. To me, that makes a bit more sense. Now, we have one more pick. And it's 222nd overall. Now, these two guys will both still be here. So, this is our decision to make. Solzer, two-way forward, or the grinder. Good work ethic, good maturity, lack skating agility on offensive consistency. Pro mentality, already ready at a young age. Any team would love to have this personality in the room. And I think these would be good in the future. A guy who lacks the drive to win, if we're trying to be a playoff team, like, as a role player, you need to be hungry every shift, in my opinion. Now, I don't know if that changes throughout time, and I don't know if even that affects things too much over time, but while he is listed as a gem... This guy, in my opinion, has the better upsides. Good work ethic and good maturity. And, you know, good personality for the room. We want to have good locker room chemistry. I think that's important to deep runs here. So while he lacks offensive consistency and skating ability, his other things will kind of make up for that or should make up for that. So I think I'm going to go with the two-way forward over the grinder. They're both left ringers. They both, well, this guy's a right-handed shot, which we do seem to lack sometimes in the forward end as right-handed shots, but... Either way, I think this guy's a guy to go for. Let's grab Andreas Solzer there. And that takes care of our draft here. Let's see if there's anything else here that might 
be steals. Nope. All right, so that guy uh, actually went undrafted there, so he didn't even actually get picked up. <laughs> so he might even drop to free agency. All right, so Stoll, Michalik, Sim, Haley, Wild, Forbes, Wilcox, and Solzer. Now, pretty much everyone we got was uh, top six or better. And I heard that's pretty good. So, a very solid draft. Uh, quality over quantity draft, you could say. And now we go to the re-sign phase, and uh, falling scouts have expiring contracts. I'll check them out. I'll probably want to sign all of them. Let's actually check them here. Or re-sign all of them. What did I say? Assign them. Contracts left. Oh, contract years left. Can I talk properly? Oh, yeah, they're all good. I want to sign all these guys. They're all... Look at their overalls. Look at their... Yeah, everything. Everything about them is good. Grab him. Ah, it always resets that. I'm not a fan of that. So you have to go back and sort again. Brooksy. Sign him. There we go. And the last guy, Masonovu. Or... Mason Ove. <laughs> French names don't don't start with me. I <laughs> can't. They're hard. All right, there we go. So with those guys, I'm all getting back. They all had great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll be right back. I need to actually get my calculator so we can start getting on this. All right, here we are. Now I did do a lot of extensions already. Uh, I forget who exactly. It's been a few days, man. I haven't gone this long. So yeah, if you guys didn't see my community posts, or uh, if you don't have, or aren't subscribed to me, then you might not have seen them. But I made some community posts. I uh, have a small fracture in my hand, thanks to a door. I love it. Get taken out by a fucking door. Let's see if Vorbiov wants a better contract than what he was asking for. Hmm. Well, you know what? That's actually not a bad deal because if he goes to like, if he gets a jump this year and he hangs around, even if he doesn't. This is actually still, honestly, a really good top four slash top six deal. 4.1 for five years. And that's a very movable contract. That's a very good deal. That's an incredible deal, actually. Now, it doesn't look like, well, he might grow still, but he's also kind of pushing it here. Maybe I want to give him some less, like a le one less year or something. I want to give him one less year and do like four flat, four by four deal. Let's see if that lines up. Yeah, that would line up. Could do a four by four deal for him. Takes him until he's 27. That'll be when he's completely done growing. Makes a bit more sense there. And it's a bit more uh, flexible for us. So yeah, I, I'm hoping he will grow. And I'm hoping this turns out to be a steal of a deal. But you know, you never know. So let's offer him that. I like that. It's a lot better than like the six or whatever the hell he was asking for. Now, Zabor doesn't want to be resigned. That makes sense. Uh, Vagic Hole, he does 80 overall now. Definitely looking like he'll settle into a top six role. And we should have room for him this year. Uh, Three years. I'd rather do two, I think, for a guy like this. Yeah, it makes a bit more sense to do two. But that's very affordable top six deal. 2.4. I could get it for a bit less. Like 2.35 for two years. There we are. Uh, Honka. Yeah, same thing. I'd say we sign him. Yeah, he wants more of a respectable deal. Two years for him as well. We'll take these uh, guys on more bridge kind of contracts because obviously they're not proven parts of our team quite yet. And those are affordable deals. All right, Kruger, on the other hand, I think we're done with Kruger. He's been in the AHL mostly, so we're definitely done with Kruger. Appreciate your time here, man, but we've moved on. Uh, Borodziak, same kind of feel. Small bridge deal for him. He might be even an AHL thing, yes, indeed. So, one-year AHL contract for Borodziak. Uh, Duchesne, probably same thing, one-year AHL deal. He might want to No, he wants a one-year. Ooh, that's a low-ass deal. I'm going to give you a bit more, man. When, don't undercut. Don't undersell yourself, Duchesne. Come on now. <laughs> I feel bad for him. Uh, Leach, a low Leach, 20 years old, 76 overall. Oh, look at that offense. Look at that defense. My goodness, yes. This guy is, gets his entry level right now. Very, very affordable entry level. <laughs> wow. Uh, Kurashev, bottom six type guy. Now, he was good for our AHL, but I think we're kind of moving on from that point now. But I'm, I'll hold off on that for now. What you're talking about, Willis, is off his entry level and 73 overall. AHL for him. Same thing with Tucker. 
top six guy. Entry level. I think we should be fine. I might not have to sign these guys, although this guy, oh, this guy is 70 overall. So honestly, I think I sign him there. Another defensive defenseman. Right-handed shot, left-handed shot. Might want to sign them both. I'll hold off just because we go, oh, this guy. 21 at 68. Eh. Not amazing, but it's, you know, serviceable. It's another center. Ugh. All of our centers. Well, you know what? His face-offs aren't horrible, but I wish they, they are pretty bad, actually. Wow, the face-offs. Sunfist will need another year off. Probably same with Boyle, too. I'll have to see what my defensive situation is looking like. Dundas, top six guy, 22-65 overall, but he is a center. Produced like hell. Not good on the face-off end of things. Not really good offensively. 74 awareness at 65 overall. It's not horrible. I could give him a chance. He was a sixth-round pick. But 22 at 65, man. I don't know about that. 21 at 64. That even that's pushing it. Yet another defensive defenseman. A lot of these guys. Hmm. What's our center situation looking like in the system? Well, you know what? He is serviceable, and we might want to get Kershev back. Duchesne, Kershev. Uh, oh, we still have Carpenter. Yeah, we sent Carpenter. Duchesne, Kershev, Carpenter, and we already offered Adams, so you know what, we don't actually don't need him, he can play a wing or something like that, so forwards in the system, some of these guys might be jumping up, we could get rid of Kershev and hand it all over to younger guys, honestly, if we wanted to, let's just do a count here. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I could. Yeah. Some of these guys might be jumping. So. Ah, I'm not just a. I'm not a huge fan of that though. <laughs> I think I can get someone else there. This is really, really low. Yeah, I've already offered Adams. We've already offered Duchesne. I'd, you know what? I'm going to get Kershev back. Yeah, I'm going to get Kershev back. It's very short term. Two years should work. Yeah, two years would be fine, actually. He can spot fill a bit. And I'll just release this guy. He's not going anywhere. I'll just release him. Uh, I don't foresee him cracking any roster here. I'm a line in 77 at uh, 24. Not looking incredible here. So we're going to do a very short-term deal. He wants a f wants money. We can afford it. But only one year. What else here? Let's check goalies here. Now Ward obviously wants a contract. He was wanting quite a bit when I was last checking him. He still wants quite a bit. I'm not giving you that much, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm cutting you down to. I'll cut you down to two years because you want a bit more than you're worth right now with how you know things have worked out. But this kind of deal is okay. This is more of a bridge contract, and it'll make a bit more sense. Three flat for two years. Let him prove himself, and then still we might even trade him depending on if we depending on what our situation is looking like. If the franchise guy is gonna be our starter, if you know, whatever, something. So get him. Lynch might even be ready for NHL. So, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on here. But I'm still thinking of being McCola and Ward as our NHLers here. And Lynch might need another year of AHL, but he might not at the same time. But then we'll have to decide. Like, McCola would look like a great backup. Now, I don't know what kind of contract we can get him on after this. Can I offer him an extension right now? No, I can't. So I'd have to wait for that. I can't offer him an extension right now. I think you have to wait till free and she starts July 1st. So I can see what kind of an extension he wants. And if I can get him for like a backup price, 
then I probably would try to do that. If I can't, then we'll have to make a decision. I don't want to keep going younger and younger with the goaltenders. Like, Mikola simmed very well, but it doesn't look like he got any, you know, growth from it. And there's no telling how he'll sim as a backup when he's listed as a starter. Uh, Ward, we don't know how he he seemed to do... Again, that's also it. The 36 games played is AHL. Uh, in the NHL, he didn't do incredibly. He did okay, but he didn't do incredibly. AHL, he did great. But if this guy's a starter this year, then we could see. And then Mikola, we can see how Mikola will perform in the backup range. So I even think Lynch, we'll want to start Lynch in the minors no matter what. Uh, he is still very young. 22 and he's already almost up to NHL. That's that's you know that's pretty damn good. So yeah, ah, tough call. But franchise goaltenders, you know, could be amazing, obviously. But I don't know. We'll have to see on that. All right, let's advance today, clean some of this stuff up, see uh, our cash situation. That'll help us out here. See if anyone declines. Okay, we got the scout. Uh, Vorbiov rejected. Uh, Tucker, Duchesne. These are all the younger t type dudes, but Brodziak wasn't. Khrushchev also accepted. Honka rejected. So our two NHL Veggie Holy also rejected. Hemelinen rejected. Interesting. All right, let's try again. But I don't want to give Vorbiov that freaking that high of a price, man. If he grows, then it'll be great. But I'm not gonna give him. I'm not gonna give him five years. That's too much in my opinion. I'll do that. Four by four point one five. I'm gonna go up slowly with him because again, he's not 100% proven. Still wanna do that one. We'll do two five for this guy. We do have we have plenty of money, so it's not that bad. Zaboral, I don't think we're gonna use it at all. I mean, he was actually he jumped up way higher than he should have, which is funny. These would be serviceable, but, you know, we have we have guys. We have our own core here that we're building up. Honka, I think I definitely want back, though. I'll do the same thing. 2-5 for him. I won't go down too much. I don't want to mess around for too long. We have plenty of cash. We're not running out. Uh, Hamelinen also rejected. So I might just give him exactly what he wants. I'll bump him up a little bit. We can afford it. Uh, D. Pietro's pissed, but he's got one year left on that contract. We might trade him or someone. Yeah, he's very one-dimensional. Obviously, he's a defensive defenseman, but 85, then 90 for shot blocking, 84 for stick checking. That's kind of weird. I prefer stick checking to be higher. And he has a bit of a physical game. But he didn't do incredible last year for us. He was a minus 7 in 39 games played. And then when we had the other combination work in Veg uh, Honka and Vorbiov, they seemed to do way better together. So... It's a tough call either way. 42 guys under contract. We might still want to sign a guy a guy or two more, and that will be dependent. So 64 at 21. Like that's kinda uh. I might let him go, but let's see what our defense is looking like in the system here. Of uh, Warbiov doesn't count, Vajaholi, Honka, these are all probably NHLers, DPHO as well. So Wisniewski. We might want to sign some of these guys. So it's Nuski, Benoit. Where's Baradziak? Because he was supposed to be down here. Interesting. He's not. Okay, this is weird. All right, let's see. Hold on. What's going on? So Baradziak, uh, AHL most likely. Peno might. Yeah, we might even have too many guys in the NHL here. So Baradziak might even play DPHO down this year. So we'll keep, we'll say tentative him. Baradziak was Nuski. Uh, Benoit. That's only three. So we probably could use this guy. Another defensive defenseman, but he's actually got good defensive stats. So let's offer him something. This is his uh, entry level. And I'm probably going to sign Kubis here. Because he can play there. Yet another defensive defenseman. But so is this guy. And I think this guy's Canadian. Yeah, so he's got one more year of junior eligibility. Kubis can play in the AHL. So I think I sign him. Everyone else can hold off. Yeah. Let's do that. And we might we still have we'll still have some controversy on defense, but we'll have the uh flexibility to kind of pick and choose at least, so that'll be good. Yeah, we got the goalie back. So we only got three guys signed. 
We'll see if this guy gets a nice jump, and then we can sign him if, if needed to play him as backup in the AHL or something. Well, it doesn't matter where he's from. He's freaking 21, so... <laughs> he might actually turn into a backup, so I don't want to... I don't want to bring him along too quickly, like, playing in the AHL before he's good enough to be there. One thing I definitely don't want to do. All right, let's advance another day here. And hopefully get everyone back. All right, so we got Versi, the scout, back. We got Vorbiov. Honk is still rejected. Interesting. Uh, we got Vagicoli, though. We got Hamalainen, Robertson, everyone else. Okay, so Honka keeps rejecting here. What's the issue? And do I need him? Maybe. We do have a lot of lefties. He's a righty. So Ekman, Larson, Malmstrom, Pete, question mark, maybe Vorbiov. Pin, yeah, oh my god. There's six right there. Honka, technically we don't even need him. Baradziak is also a right-handed shot. But Honka did pretty good. We might want to trade one of these other guys. Pinot, 22 at 79. Listed as depth. Two-way guy. Not really built well defensively or offensively. He's kind of looking like a meh. And I do want Honka back because he was very solid for us. And he's all he's guaranteed to only be a top six guy, which is good for us. Alright, I'll give him a bit more. But I'm not going to go too crazy with it, man. So Pino's on his last year, so... We got to see what growth we get. I'm really hoping Pete will jump up here. I, I can really use Pete to get a nice jump. I'm hoping he does, man, because he's a great player. But he's just... I, I love him to be just a couple overall better. And we're still looking for that top guy, you know. Pino's not going to get there. Vorbiov, I mean, not looking like it unless he gets a nice jump to the mid-80s. But even then... Yeah. He'll just be, he'll still be a top four guy. He'll need another jump after that, so... We're going to have two lefties in the top four most likely this year, which kind of worked last year. We might put Pete on his one time since he did get quite a few goals last year. Yeah, a lot of defensemen. So a lot of picking and choosing that's going to be going on here. All right, I don't know if we have anyone else left to sign. We do have a few roster slots available, but I might want to save them. We got one more guy with a pending, but that's it. So let's advance today, make sure we get the guys that we're going for. All right, we got, yeah, and it looks like uh, he signed too. So that's everyone. We got the guys back. We should have 44 guys under contract out of 50, which is good. We can go to free agency here, see what's available, maybe address any shortcomings on our team, but I think we're still kind of set in that regard. And I don't think we'll need to spend money. We might, but you know what? I'm, let's let's just go. Let's sum up the free agency, see if we need to spend money here. I don't know. I'm trying to think in my head what our cap situation. We have 14 mil available. Austin Matthews, Kucherov, <laughs> Kuznetsov, McAvoy. Oh my goodness. McAvoy hit free agency. That is interesting. 27, right? In his prime. That would almost solve that would solve a lot of our problems, but I'm kinda kinda hesitant to sign another big free agent. I might just trade for some guys. We have plenty of value. I don't want to get stockpiled on value again and just have too much and not not enough to do it with so a lot of teams are interested in him Subban is also back but meh he only wants a one-year deal though hmm I just think we have too many defense one I, I gotta see what happens here then we can make trades I think we're at the point where we don't we don't really have a note like a huge huge gaping noticeable hole anywhere on our team but we need to see where guys are going to grow and line up to to then address what the perceived shortcomings are that's at least my opinion on it McAvoy is great don't get me wrong and uh, I think he produces pretty decently a decent production guy very decent production guy but we did you know draft just draft that offensive defenseman and yeah all right, well, I know some people have been telling me to keep sorting by potential. There's, you know, like, likely some unsigned uh, dudes here, but actually not. <laughs> not any, at least on the younger side of things. Let's go to two-way, actually. Interesting. There's not as many as there has been in the past, unless they're just not showing up, but maybe they just play elsewhere. This is the 20-year-old right there, but... Honestly, it used to be 
bunch more of those guys. Okay, well, that's what free agency looks like. There's actually quite a bit. A lot more than you'd think. I mean, dry, like, look at this freaking free agency pool. That's actually ridiculous. Like, how, how are these, some of these guys aren't even going to be able to get signed? Like, dry saddle, Yossi might not even get signed. Crate, they're out on the older side of things, but still. It's actually kind of crazy. Damn, man. Kucherov, though. That would be pretty crazy. If that guy got... That's a lot of money. One team's already in seven years, though. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a horrific contract. I'd give him five for that price. But no, not even that much. I'd give him maybe four. Like, that's... I don't even know. That's 32-year-old Kucherov, like, for that much. is That's pushing it. But, yeah, McAvoy makes sense. He has the most guys interested in him. Smack in his prime. Austin, look how much Austin Matthews asking for. <laughs> that is hilarious. Basically like 15 mil that we'd have to offer to get him. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, I don't know. While we could sign one of these guys, I would rather trade for something that I really know I need rather than sign a guy and have another controversy with way too many guys have to trade him off anyway and then what get picks for him and then run into the same problems that we did before so I'm gonna say I'm not gonna sign anyone here and like besides maybe a role player or something or maybe someone to get us to the cap floor because yeah it's uh like I like I said I'd rather use a bunch of the value we have and trade for something that we really, really need. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, you guys can let me know if you have any other ideas and stuff like that. But, I mean, you take a look at our team. We're pretty set. I mean, we just made it to the conference finals. We were, you know, just just so close. So close to getting all the way. And, I mean, look at this, man. So much value. Look at Amuse's value. That's ridiculous for an enforcer. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, this is last year. <laughs> Uh, Peyton Man, he's actually got a tremendous amount of value. We'll see. This is his. This is the last entry level year. Now Stoll is is the guy that we want to really, really be able to see. Obviously, I'll sign him at some point if he if he's looking really good. But I'm gonna start him off contract. We'll still be able to get a look at him. He's playing in Europe right now. But yeah, I mean, damn. If you just just look at our team, even in overall wise, it's pretty ridiculous. Now Nyquist, hopefully he bumps back up to where he was. Karpov says value is actually low for his overall, but he is being boosted by stat growth right now, but he's maintaining it by having tremendous seasons. Last year wasn't incredible, but it was still 60 points. But yeah, man, I mean, defensively, you can claim that we're on the weaker side of things, and we are. But before I make, you know, a big signing or something, I would rather find exactly what I need and make a trade for it with all of this excess value that we have. Because we have so much. Like, Pino, that's too much value for a guy like that, in my opinion. But I'll use it. I'll use it. He's on his last year, too. And, you know, if he's not looking like he's jumping way the hell up there, you know, is that a guy that we give it to? I don't know. So, yeah. I mean, that's just an insane amount of value. And a lot of veteran defensemen. So, if we're going to need a guy like that to, like, fill in the top two or something like that, and we can move Malmstrom down, like, we'll trade some of the, you know, some of the guys in the H NHL, maybe some of the prospects. But I don't think we should sign a guy. I think we're past that point. <laughs> We just need to use our value here and use our players, I think. So uh, that's where I'm at. And uh, we'll check the awards here before we sign off. Because New York won the cup. Good job. They swept uh, They swept them, I'm pretty sure, too. As I saw, they were like 3-0, and and then I'm pretty sure they won the next game. So New York swept St. Louis. So St. Louis met their match. Sadikov had himself a good uh, year. That's two years in a row for the presence for New York. Yeah, St. Louis against New York for the uh, Cup. That, ooh, they lost last year, but they made us. That's two years in a row New York has made it, but they lost last year. So, good on them for winning it. Art Ross went to Sagan. He sure... Oh, my goodness. He sure got the heart. Interesting. I actually didn't expect that. But I guarantee you he also won the Selkie if they're giving that to him. Good job. Uh, Norris went to Yossi. Lady Bing went to Sagan. Three years running. My goodness. Calder went to uh, C. Stoner. Uh, Con Smythe went to McArdle there for New York. Uh, Vesna Hellebuck got it. Uh, speaking of which, William and Jennings uh, Hellebuck also got it. I will. I'll read off the winners in the next episode because I completely forgot this one. Uh, Goring, yeah, 
make uh he sure did get the selkie so hell yeah he sure took home two very important pieces of hardware and he also got the ted Lindsay. so he took home three trophies did he sure good season for he sure all right so yeah next one next video i'll read off the uh, winners for the uh, contest and stuff like that all right not bad not bad not bad okay so that does it for that free agency will be up next draft pretty successful not a lot of picks but we got a lot of bang for our bucks so to speak so i hope you guys enjoyed this remember to leave that like and i'll see you in the next one if watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you be sure to go over there on twitter and shoot me a follow and you could even join our discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there the links to both are in the description